Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Mac and Chuck Show with your hosts, Chuck Hill and Scott McKenzie. Two things. I think you forgot who we were for a second. You paused a little bit longer than I thought you would. Oh, that was for dramatic effect. Well, it wasn't. <laughs> second off, enough? second off, do you not like me to do the intro anymore? Was I too Rod Roddy from The Price is Right the last time? Oh, no, you're good. Oh, okay. Good. It's all good, baby. I just saw you adjusting your camera, so I thought I'd kind of take it away. <laughs> I was adjusting myself. <laughs> but bump. He's here all week, folks, at least till 7 o'clock tonight. So what do we decide? We're going to do some retooling. Is that what we talked about? I think so. Yeah, I think uh, tonight's show may be a short show. We don't know yet. We're going to talk a little bit about, um, you know, maybe some '90s stuff that you know we t- we did the '80s uh, movies and music and that. So, talk about that and uh, yeah, you know, we had a conversation beforehand for our viewers and listeners. We're going to take just a, a really short break, not a long break, but we're going to maybe do a little bit of redesign of the show, maybe do a little more organization um, and bring some things in a more, I guess, if structured, is that the word? You're structured. For? Yeah. I was going to say more professional format, but I was no, 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 no. Professional. professional? <laughs> we could try. I mean, yeah, we, uh, I like structure better. Structure is much better. I like that. Okay. Word. Fair enough. Now we still have the freedom to be, you know, complete and total idiots if we want to. To us, that's professional. Speaking of complete and total idiots. Guess who's coming not. back to the radio together? You told me this, Bueller. but why don't you tell everybody Bueller. else? Bueller. Ladies and gentlemen, Steve and DC are going to be back on the radio together. Um, unfortunately, they're not going to be together on the St. Louis dial, um, but they are going to be together uh, at their Alabama station. I think it's 95.3, the bear. Um, Is that so- uh can you get that off of the internet radio? Can you get that? Or is it going to be syndicated like other sh- national shows that you have to go on their website and pay for? The no, service? you you can actually uh, catch it online. So obviously we're not going to get 95.3 The Bear up here, but we always want to promote some, you know, St. Louis uh, shows beforehand. And man, I just know that I really enjoyed listening to Stephen DC, you know, back in the day. And it's just, it's really great to to hear that they're going to be back on the radio together again. You know that one of their former uh, co-hosts is now on the radio, right? 106.5 The Arch in the morning. Which one is that? That's Courtney Landrum. Oh, okay. All right. She does the art show in the morning. The art show. I don't get some Arch, 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 Arch. 106.5 oh, okay. The Arch. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah, so no, I mean, if, if you guys uh, get a chance, check out the, I think it, it may be, they may have their own app. Uh, again, it's 95.3 The Bear. Um, and I think Tuscaloosa, Alabama is where it's going to is be. Is that at. where it is? Yeah, I believe so. Yeah. So, yeah, that's kind of cool. You know, we've got some, you know, I mean, they're rebooting everything else. So why not reboot and retool the Stephen DC show? And, you know. Spe- speaking of that, you did send me some pretty interesting stuff. You actually did get an answer, did you not? Um, I did. So I did reach out to both um, Steve Shannon and DC Chimes to see if we could uh, get them on the show. And they didn't tell us no. Which was that? That's a good thing, you know. At least we didn't get a, a flat out no. We did get a let's see how things go, and like I think DC said that he was in the process of uh, getting moved, um, so they could do the show. So hopefully, once they kind of get their feet and they get their bearings, that you know we can get those guys on the show. And if you know them, you ought to encourage them. Hey, you guys need to be on the Mac and Chuck show. So a couple losers out of Illinois. You know, that are right across the river from where you used to be. I'm just saying. Right. Hey, still St. Louis Market, right? Right. Only we're nationwide. We're bad. We're bad. We're bad. We're nationwide. I was wondering. I was was like, like, uh, is that that how the song went? I I think so. I'm not 100%. I do have a question. Yeah. Can I go back to Florida now? So tell us about your trip. Oh, it's got, the weather down there has got to be better than here. No, it was pretty similar, actually, you know, with the heat. Uh, the humidity is a little less, especially the time we went, um, you know, at night, you, you know, having because we were right 
I mean, literally, our condo's balcony was 18 stories up. I mean, you look down, there's the pool, you know, the long deck. Mm -hmm. They had a gate. There's the beach. There's the gulf. So nice. as, as you're looking out the balcony, all you see is water. I mean, the sunsets were amazing. Um, at night, you listen to the waves have this, you know, the, the sliding door open with the screen shut. Hear the waves. You feel the gulf breeze. I'm just, you know, you, you got that slobber <laughs> sleep in the morning to where your face is stuck to the pillow. Right. Uh, I want to go back. So I spent some time in Daytona Beach uh, a few years back when I worked for a food distributor in the area. And the hotel we stayed at was right on the beach. And uh, it was so nice. You're right. actually right. Just going to sleep, leave that door open, you know, hope that a seagull doesn't, doesn't fly in and decorate your room for you. That, that's why you have the screen door. Yeah. But, oh, it was so nice just right. being out there. Yeah, I can't wait. Um, by the way, I, I got to give a – go ahead. No, I was going to say I had a hard time keeping my 16-year-old. Every time he'd wake up, he'd go lay on the deck. You know, in the in the evening, he'd lay on the deck. Dad, can I go to the beach? Dad, can I go to the beach? And, you know, he's 16. I would have let him. But his brother wanted to go with him. And you know uh -huh. how brothers can be? It's like, no, I don't want to, like – rescue your brother from you like throwing him into the deep part of the gulf i don't want to do that so right but not only that, but let's be honest when you let a 16 year old boy loose on a beach in florida he's not going to pay attention to his 12 year old son he has other things or his 12 year old brother i was like <laughs> he has other things he's going to be focused on so now you know speaking for myself at, the, at that age yes my son no 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 okay well no. you know that's okay. To, to, to each their own. <laughs> to each their own. I know that I wouldn't be paying attention to my younger brother. No, well, you never did anyway. Neither did I. So nah, that's true. So I mean, we all kind of paid attention to your younger brother. We were, you know, making fun of him, calling him <laughs> a Sheppy Punk, Throw, throwing like throwing him out of the back of trucks. You know, <laughs> dooleys. Throwing him out the back of a dooley. No, it wasn't a dooley. That's what he wanted. That's what he. Okay, that's right. That's right. No, right. the the three things take her somewhere in his dually and do things. <laughs> <laughs> <That's> things, <laughs> things that shall not be mentioned on the Mac and Chuck show at this particular point. If you want to learn about those things, check out the Darren Yates show. He'll be happy to to, to, to to clue you in on that. Speaking of which, you know we have an open invite, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We need to get on his show. We need to get him back on our show. And you know. Since he does it on Thursdays, the only way I would not be able to go is since I'm off Thursdays, I can always go from one to three in Soulard, but the kids get here like 20 after two, and I really don't know if I want to leave them to their own devices for that long. Yeah, awesome. Now, does he broadcast from Soulard? Is that where he's broadcast? That's my understanding. I'm, I'm not sure of the studio. I don't know of any of the intricate details, but from what I understand, he's he's taping or broadcasting or whatever from Soulard. Nice. For those of you who don't know that aren't from the St. Louis area, Sular District is it's a really cool place to go. There's a, a lot of culture going on down there, a lot of um I guess you could say artsy stuff. Um I mean more so now than when I was a kid. Yeah, yeah. Now if you're into the bar scene at all, bands, Soulard. my band Soulard is definitely where you want to go. If, if you like fresh produce, Soulard Market. Bingo. Yeah, uh, fresh flowers. Um yeah, it's a cool place to head down there. So was that our shout out for Soulard? Uh, I think our shout out was actually for Stephen DC. Hey, that was our shout out. I think we had more than one, didn't we? We, I, you know what? We, we you know, Stephen DC, Soulard, and the Darren Eight Show. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just saying. So now I, I have to let you guys know as entertaining as you guys may find her, uh, Kimberly D. Boyer may or may not be watching the show right now. She and uh, the love of her life are, I think they're on their way to California. I'm um, sorry. They did right make now, a stop I'm in sorry. Vegas. Yeah, I know, right? However, I will say, and as much as she hates to hear me talk about this, I will be going to sunny California um, in, uh, in the middle you're of gonna, November. You're getting a phone call. Probably. Probably. Hello? Hello? <laughs> right. Yeah, no. But, uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to that. I'm California is one of those places that I've wanted to go, but I've never really had the opportunity to. Yeah, but it's not going to be the same as before. Yeah, I don't think so. I mean, I think what we'll be doing for the most part, um, 
will be ha- hanging out outside for the most, to- most I hope part. So. Yeah. So I'm pretty excited about that. So it's it's one of those crazy things. So just to kind of uh, let you guys kind of know what happened, uh, a friend of mine from high school, I've been friends with him for, man, almost as long over as 30 friends. Yeah. yeah, over 30. Yeah, we can technically use that term now, over 30. Uh, but yeah, he uh, he won those. Uh, like, you know, when you play a scratch off ticket and you lose, but you fill out the back of it and then you send it off somewhere. Oh, he got the second chance prize. He got the second chance, yeah. And so he needed to take somebody with him. And since I had to cancel my trip, I should have been leaving today, actually. Since I had to cancel my trip uh, for this round, um, I actually still get an opportunity to go to California during the cold time here. So hopefully it'll be a little bit more warm during that time. And aren't you uh, meeting someone else there? I am. Uh, That's the hope, anyway. Uh, If he's he's watching the show, uh, John Miller. 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 Miller, it's, it's going to be Miller time in California. That's too much Miller for California. <laughs> so I am looking forward uh, to hanging out with uh, with my friend Chris and hanging out with John also, if John yeah. is able to make it. I haven't seen Chris in years. Yeah, years. Yeah, it's, uh, it's uh, I get, well, technically I saw him recently. Um, shout out also to uh Kimberly uh, Pierce Pearson. I'm not sure why I'm like. What do you have a senior moment? What's I, I don't going know on what's there? going on. You know, it, it's it's the beard thing. You know, it's like you know, Samson lost all of his strength when he shaved. You know, when he had his haircut. Well, I went to trim my beard up, and the trimmers went in too much. Like I had it set on a three, and it like slipped into a one, and so I had to like you know trim it all down. <laughs> it sucks. So yeah, all my 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 intelligence comes from my beard. So I got to grow my beard back out. <laughs> Nice try, because if that's the case, I'd be Einstein. <laughs> uh, but anyway, you know, uh, shout out to, to Kim. You know, she took care of some uh, notary stuff for us. So if you guys are looking for a notary, check Kim out. Looking for a real estate agent, check Kim out. You know, she'll be able to help you guys out. Jack of all uh, trades, master of none. I don't know, man. She's pretty good at what she does. So she, I'm going to refer to her as the kingmaker, um, because she was uh, quite instrumental in getting a, a Mayor Parkinson. Um, elected, so uh, you know, so yeah, I would say that, that that's that's pretty cool there. Well, what are you looking for then? What am I working for? I said, what are you looking for? If you know, if you're if she's the kingmaker, what, what what's your request? My request from her? Hmm. Well, she actually took care of some notary stuff. Oh, uh, for me, so that was kind of nice. So let's kind of get to it, man. What do you guys as far as like uh, '90s shows well, and music and as the uh, the 14 hour drive unfolded <laughs> back from Florida. I'm think, you know, the mind goes here, you know, you're listening to music, listening to kids. It kind of led me to think about where I was. I mean, cause literally that's the, you know, we always talk about the eighties that we grew up in, but we literally grew up in the nineties. Yeah. You know, from graduating high school, 91 ish. Yeah. To, 99 after both of us had kids yeah you know it into the new decade you know and, and the big transformation from what we were used to in high school to cell phones that it looked like zach morris's big old brick <laughs> right. you know that were handheld internet in the palm of, you know it, it was just a that quick in a 10-year span how the world changed you know yeah. as far as you know music you know you had the hip hop stuff, you had the end of the hair metal, you had grunge beginning all the way up to the electronic, more R and B stuff that ended the decade. And, and in the middle you had Lilith Fair stuff. You know, so it's right. really interesting how the music transitioned and, and and the movies as far as the production value really increased within a 10 year period. And I think that's worth talking about. Yeah, I would agree with you. As- Particularly music wise and even movie wise. I mean, when you look at the the change that movies made, and I think a lot of that came from the technological advances mm-hmm. that occurred in the nineties as well. And it's kind of when the nerds took over, so to speak. You know, when when we were in school, it was a bad thing to be a nerd, but if you were a nerd back then, it was a good thing to be a nerd in the nineties, you know. How much um, money do those dudes have now? I mean, come on. <laughs> Well, okay, so look at Bill Gates. You know, I mean, he may not be the 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 string buller by Microsoft now, but have you seen Bill Gates' 
pictures, I mean, we're talking the epitome of nerd, right? Yeah, just a bit. Now he's got more money than like anyone I could ever dream of. Yeah. So he's is he still like the of the top five most richest men in the oh, world? Oh, I'm sure. Is he still there? I'm sure. <clears throat> so, but yeah, I mean, the movies, I mean, you had, I, I think a lot of transform, a lot of, tra- a lot of transformative movies came with, uh, for me, it was probably Clerks when uh, Kevin Smith, and I think that was 95, um, kind of that midpoint, you know, and then there was, like you had Matt Dillon, um, you know, he was a big actor back then. I think that Ben Affleck and Matt Damon were kind of starting, you know, to, like, I think we saw a real change uh, in Hollywood back then. From the um, A-list, how the yeah. A-list people that that were there kind of went down a few rungs and the younger people really took over. Yeah, and, and it's interesting because I was thinking about that the other day. There are actors out there that I have no idea who they are now. And I see them on popular shows and I'm like, who are these people? I, I don't know. And that, that That's our age. Probably. But I think now I kind of know how our parents felt as mm-hmm. things were changing a little bit. It is so weird that, not weird, I guess it's a natural progression of things, that as we get older, we tend to understand our parents a little more um, because we're kind of living through what they went through, the changes. You know, we see huge technological changes, you know, both in music, movies, art, technology, mm-hmm. We think about the things that our parents saw, and while it was normal to us, it was a huge change for them. TVs changed. I mean, they went from black and white TVs to color TVs, and they went from TVs were just supposed to be a fad to it's the the staple in TV. every home in the world now. Yeah, um, you know, you look at computers. You know, even when like the internet was supposed to just be a big fad for us, right? Well, our lives pretty much depend on it. Uh, right now um so yeah it's it's interesting um what was a transformative movie for you back in the 90s like if you could pick a 90s movie that was definitive for you what would you say it was oh my gosh talk about putting me on the spot i really don't know i mean you you had you know what we thought was awesome in the early 90s as far as you know batman you know that was awesome you know we were always into the comic book movies you know, you're starting with something like that, and then you go to Armageddon, Deep Impact, you know. Oh, yeah. Stuff, you know, those movies. And just the, as you said, just the production value from that to that within, what, seven, eight years? Was Armageddon, what, 80, 98, somewhere in that neighborhood? Uh, I'm not real sure when that came out. I know that, so I read an article the other day about Batman in particular, really transformed the comic book movie in and of itself. Right. And while that came out in 89, I think that Batman Returns came out in like 92 or 93 or something like that. And just the comic book genre of movies changed so much. And then just movies in and of themselves changed. You went from, you know, late 80s computer, you know, squared generated, generated graphics, like movies like Tron, Mm-hmm. All the way into the 90s, you know, with the Amiga computers and Apple doing what they were doing and, you know, the early days of Pixar and things like that. I mean, you mm-hmm. just really see a, a huge transformation um, in movies. Uh, again, for me, I think that if I if I could pick a and someone can call me out on this, I encourage anyone who's watching right now that to would. comment on your, uh, you know, on the on the chat, you know. Man, Clerks was just huge for me because it kind of went, for me, it was kind of artsy, but it was really cool. And it just kind of spoke to our generation with all the the pop culture references during that time. Uh, it was a huge one. And then it was another one, I think, uh, like the, the Truth About Cats or the Truth About Cats and Dogs or something like that. It kind of had a 90s version of the Brat Pack. And I think Matt Dillon was in it. Um, then I think Winona Ryder was in it. Uh, Mary Mary Stuart Masterson. Uh, just some of those 90s actors that are kind of going by the wayside now, almost like the Brat Pack did in the 80s. Like they had their place in the 80s, but when it came to the 90s, they just started migrating away. We heard less from Anthony Michael Hall. We didn't hear much from uh, um, Molly Ringwald. You know, I mean, the, you, Ali Sheedy, we didn't hear much, you know, from those guys. Uh, who was the other one? He, um, 
Oh, he's on black. Well, everybody hears about Charlie Sheet. Oh, uh, James Spader. Yeah, James Spader, you know. Um, so uh, Robert Downey Jr. Man, you want to talk about a comeback. I mean, that guy. Jeez. I mean, the, the guy doesn't even look the same. Mm. I mean, you know what I mean? I mean, you look at him in what? Weird Science? As opposed to... Weird Science? Have you seen as less opposed than zero? to Iron Man? Yes. Yeah, less than zero. While the the content of that movie was pretty raw, it was a man. You want to talk about someone who had some acting chops, right? You know, you could tell that you know that he was going to be better than what he was at that point. You know, through movies like that. So I think that was that. You know, that was a really good movie, also for the eighties. Mm-hmm. Um, what about music? Okay, well, we'll I mean, we talk about. Pick a genre. I mean, you had it all. It all. I mean, it all did. Yes. It all kind I mean, of. Go ahead. No, I just everything. I mean, you had, like I said, you start out with you know the the very flashy, hip hop and R and B. You know, from the Tone Lokes to the Young MCs to the you know MC Hammer, so Cover Me Bad, Factory. right? Oh my God. <laughs> you had all that. And, it, you know, that never, you know, that everybody said, well, rap's just a phase, but it really wasn't. I mean, it just yeah. really morphed into, you know, the 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 sound of, you know, 98, 99, that was more of a, of a hip hop, what you heard on the radio more than what the decade started out with, mm-hmm. or even halfway through it. I mean, like I said, you know, when, when a St. Louis station goes and calls itself Alice at 104.1, I mean... I think I think the uh, what what they play is pretty self explanatory, right? Uh, I mean, and that station went from country to heavy metal to Lilith Fair stuff to you yeah. know uh, I mean the the stations were changing as much as the music was. So, what are your thoughts on Woodstock '99? You know, I mean, when when that came because there were a lot of bands that were definitive that were 90s definitive at woodstock 99 um i believe alanis morissette was there the offspring was there um i I think there's a big see i'm wondering if you're thinking 94 as opposed to 99 they had a woodstock 94 was that it woodstock 99 was the one where it was like on a uh yeah it was on like a an abandoned base to where the con- there was no grass; it was all concrete. Mm-hmm. You know, everybody was charging five dollars. You know, it became too commercial for what the yeah. Woodstock idea originally was. You may be right. I remember watching a, a documentary. I think you had recommended right um, on that. So you may be right as far as as far as that goes. Um, and mm-hmm. I will tell you what, watching that documentary, they actually like some of the things that they covered in the documentary. Man, there's no way they'd get away with it. You know, no. these days or whatever. And like, I want to say that uh, Mark McGrath, no, it wasn't him. Who was it? Like, there was a guy who called, like, all these guys out, you know, for, like... I think it was the lead singer of The Offspring, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah. I just remember, I think, the blonde hair. Maybe right. I could be wrong on that. But back then, I think every guy no, had he, blonde hair. <laughs> I mean, I mean, can you imagine something like what he talked about happening now? Oh, dude. No way. There's no, no way. way. Yeah. So... If you were to so for me, I'll, I'll I'll say that in the '90s, I really kind of felt that actual rock and roll kind of got back to its roots with groups like Hootie and Blowfish. I thought that they were actual rock. Um, Spin Doctors. I thought that they you know were really getting back to rock and roll roots. Um, I, I I do think that groups like Offspring and as much as I didn't like them at the time, uh, Nirvana. I mean, they pretty much turned the music world upside down. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, um, and then when Foo Fighters, they formed in the nineties as well, didn't they? Or was that early two thousands? No, I I think you're right. I think it was the mid to late nineties, I I believe. Um, what I would say was, you know, Nirvana created a whole genre of music and destroyed one at the same time. Oh yeah. Hair metal was gone. Gone. Like the glam rock just, yeah, totally went out the window at that point. I think that groups like. You know, like Poison knew that it was over for them. Cinderella knew that it was over for them. Well, and not um, only that, but you but you, you heard them try to change their sound to match, mm-hmm. to, to be to stay uh, prominent. Yeah, well, it was just a different time that was evolving. You know, it's just like the '80s were 
a lot different from the 70s. I mean, there were some similarities right. there, especially in the early 80s during that right. transition period. But yeah, I would say 87 to probably 92. Two, yeah. Yeah, it was about, that was it for hair metal. Mm -hmm. I mean, now you take groups like, you know, Guns N' Roses. I mean, those guys actually last a little while until Axl Rose got really kind of weird with the music or whatever. And the other guys Stupid. are like, yeah. You know, it's interesting you say that because the Use Your Illusion albums, I actually enjoyed. There were some people that were like, man, this is stupid. This is too much. But November Rain, I thought was a, man, I thought it was a phenomenal right. song. As far as writing and, and, you know, arranging the music, it was. But as far as I think the, and I think I heard it somewhere, as far as the other members go, it was more like, you know, why are we going into the theatrics? We just want to go right. out and rock. Right. You know, you know, but then again, goes goes the, uh, the, the all the focus on the lead singer and what they want to do because they're essentially the face of of the band. So you know, right. you, you, some some people don't want to, and that's usually what happens with bands. The rest of the members don't want to go the direction that the uh, lead singer does, so they split off, and you, you know, you have those feuds like you had. Yeah, well, David Lee Roth was a perfect example of that. Um, you know, when the Diver Down album came out and it was you know full covers you know the rest of the band was like what the hell we don't want to do covers we want to do right. you know but david lee roth wanted to do covers so they caved they did diver down and i don't really think it was all that great of an album but i do know that the other band members hated it like mm -hmm. they just they they hated the album um, and then you know so then david lee roth goes off and does his own thing but i find it interesting because while he went and did his own thing van halen still progressed and they were still a great group with you know what some of us call van hagar you know i mean i thought sammy hagar was a, a great addition to van halen i really enjoyed a lot of that music and again i mean so i'm terrible with with dates uh but That's I, what I'm you know, for. yeah so you know what years was hagar with van halen 96 or no 86 through 93 Okay, so it was within that ninety that nineties right. period. I mean, because I think ninety one mm. was the uh, what what I call the naughty album, which was for unlawful carnal knowledge. Which, if you do the acronym, <laughs> you know what it was called. Um, that what, you know, what would that be? <laughs> fudge cookie. Um, you had the uh, you know the that album spawn. You know, right now. You know the, the the music in the early '90s, yeah. Um, but I mean, even if you go from that, you know, you go from the rock and roll that you talked about, you know, the the that type of genre. It really, I mean, you heard some of it. I mean, for example, and I know people are gonna be like, I have Rat's greatest hits. But you listen to the to the mid '90s or the mid '80s music, you know the hair metal that they call it, yeah. And and there's a song in there that they did in '99, and you can really tell, you know, the transformation that they tried to change their sound to meet up with today's standards and what everybody, you know, the, what the sound was. And a lot of bands mm -hmm. couldn't do that, which is why they went into obscurity and threw out a song every now and then that that caught people's ears. Yeah, you know, I mean, I think one of the hardest things for someone who's famous, um, I wouldn't know because I personally am not famous beyond, you know, the Mac and Chuck show, <laughs> you know, and uh, yeah, I, I think that it's really hard for someone to let go of that feeling when they have oh, it. So sure. they've got to do everything that they can to grab onto it and just, and it gets to a point where it's sad, you know, like it gets to a point where it's like, Man, you were really awesome back in the day, but your time has kind of come and gone. Right. You know, see us in 20 years when you do the reunion tour mm -hmm. or something mm -hmm. like that. Um, so what do you think of reunion tours? Do you think it's a good thing, a bad thing? What are your thoughts on that? Um, my personal thoughts on that are I love them because I get to see now what I couldn't see as a kid. Okay. Um, do you think you still get the same quality that you would have gotten back then? To me, I get the same musical that I would have gotten back then. I don't get the show. Okay, that's fair. If, if, if you get my point, as far as yeah. you know, the 
the, the production value, the jumping around, all that stuff, because, you know, these guys are in their 50s and 60s now. You and can't do this. <laughs> ah, there goes my hip. <laughs> right. I mean, for, for Christ's sake, what? In St. Louis last Sunday was the Rolling Stones who are in their mm -hmm. mid to late 70s. Yeah. I mean, they're yeah. not, Mick's not jumping around on the stage anymore. <laughs> I'll tell you that right now. Um, but, but as far as musically, I don't think you know, outside of the arthritis and the guitar players, I don't think you lose that, you know, as far as the muscle memory goes and the, yeah. you know, as a musician, I'm sure you can relate to that to some, to, to some degree, as far sure. as, you know, you, you don't lose the, the muscle memory and the, and the, the remembrance of how to play a song. I just don't think the, the full mm -hmm. production value that you would have seen 30 years ago is there anymore. Understandably right. so. Sure. I, so a couple of years back before, you know, um, COVID hit, um, I got to see, it was funny because I got to see new kids on the block and Debbie Gibson and Tiffany and Naughty by Nature and Salt and Peppa. And you could definitely tell when the new kids on the block were up there dancing and moving around, they were definitely not dancing and moving around like they did in the late eighties, early nineties. Are you saying they're looking for the ibuprofen bottles after about 20 minutes? I'm just saying that those uh, legs were not moving quite as fast as they used to. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, when when they were doing their slides, they were, uh, yeah, the, the slides were a little slower than what, you know, they were doing back there. Step by step was more, um, uh, a, a little slower, uh, slower than steps, you know. <laughs> uh, I, You know what? I could totally see you geeking out at that show, too. For one what, reason. Well, you know, you would think. But when she came on, when, when she came on, she kept having mic problems and things like oh, that. That's the worst. So, yeah, it, 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 <laughs> it really stunk. I mean, the rest of the show was good. Don't get me wrong. But, yes, ladies and gentlemen, I was there specifically to see Miss Debbie Gibson. Of course you were. Um, but, uh, you know, I did get to. Well, there's nothing you know, wrong with that. No, no, no. Like in the words of Jerry Seinfeld, not that there's anything wrong with that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, but, yeah, it was it was a good show. But it. So I so I, I didn't get to go to many shows back in high school. I did get to see right. new kids back in high school. Um, and I got to see them, you know, as, as an adult. And there was a bit of a difference um, mm -hmm. in the show. I saw sure. you know, I saw Tiffany, oddly enough, at a new kids concert. And I saw her at this at this past concert also. And and it, it was a little different. But I think that the production value, while it may change, it, it was still good for what I was mm -hmm. seeing. Uh, now you went and saw Slaughter not too long ago. I did. Correct? I yeah. did. So now and not what about 12, 13 years ago, you and I went and saw Poison and Vince Neal and uh Sebastian Bach. Skid Row, yeah. Uh, was it Skid Row or Sebastian Bach? Sebastian Bach. Okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, even then, I mean, I'm sure that there were different shows than what we saw before. <laughs> and you know what I'm laughing at. <laughs> it was a party, wasn't it? <laughs> At least for the guy in front of us. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Oh jeez! And you know what? Here's uh, the thing: I think he may have been younger than we were. You think? I don't know, man, but those leather gloves were on point. If you, uh, <laughs> all you people out there that are watching this show right now, this guy uh, that was in front of us, he let's just say that he was really enjoying the show. Yes, he was. Like really enjoying the show, and I. I was afraid he was going to throw his arm out of socket or whatever, but yeah, it was a, uh, it was cool. And that was, he was having fun. No, yeah, he was, he was there at a concert having a great time and we yeah. were too. And, um, did we have another friend with us that night? Or was that just, no, it was just us. Okay. Because there was another concert we had gone to. I think it may have still been called Riverport, but like the weed smell like came. No, it was there. that one. It was that. Oh, one. Was it that one? Yes, it was. Okay. I thought we had another friend with us at the time. No, Cause we're like, uh, hungry. Now, <laughs> I think we both left with contact buzzes from that night. Yes. So, um, but yeah, I, th I really think that uh, the quality of the shows that we get now are, are different. And, you know, maybe I know that I'm not jumping up and down like I did back then. And not that I would be sitting in, you know, sitting down at a Motley Crue concert or something like that. But, you know, I definitely wouldn't be, you know, headbanging like we did back in the 80s you know for one my brain definitely couldn't handle it <sighs> right <laughs> slip a disc in your neck or something so did you get to go to many concerts in the 90s i went to 
Let me think. I I never got to go to a concert by myself growing up. Um, trying to think. There was two concerts I went to as a kid, and that's only because Dad brought that. Well, three. That's only because Dad bought the tickets. First one I went to was Chicago and the Beach Boys at the Muni in 86. Okay. Second one I went to was the Monkees Reunion concert. Nice. Third one I went to was uh, like a 60s extravaganza at the Fox where I saw the Turtles. Oh, nice. Um, uh, Gary Puckett and Union Gap. Um, Peter was Noon. That, was Young Girl, was that Gary Puckett? Who was that? Well, why don't you sing us a couple bars, Chuck? Uh, nah, I'm good. <laughs> you know, it's funny because I remember you going to concerts at the Fox, and I've heard of other people talking about good call. concerts at the Fox. But is that who it was? Gary Puckett Gary? and Union Gap. Okay, all right. But when I think rock concerts, I really don't think Fox Theater, you know. Um, I mean, I could see someone there like Aretha Franklin or someone that's a little more laid back. I, I know, saw. I couldn't, you know. I saw Yes there once. Yeah, see, I don't see, like for me, when I think Yes, I don't think Fox. I think, you know, Riverport or I think right. Enterprise or something like that. Or, is, yeah, it's Enterprise now. You know, I, I think, you know, or even Bush, you know, I, I think, you know, venues like that, but. But in the you, same token, the acoustics, you have to take in mind, the I mean, the acoustics mm -hmm. at the Fox are just phenomenal. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's built for live theater, right. you know, so, yeah. I can see that. So, yeah, I'm trying to think back in the 90s. I'm not really sure if I gone to many con i can't remember exact when did we go to that um the the, the poison concert was that that was in the 90s wasn't it? because i think my daughter had been born by then dude i don't yeah i, I can't remember she was born in you know i don't say when she's born for like you know safety reasons or security reasons i don't you know what was your daughter's date of birth oh there was your password <laughs> um oh. God, I want to say early 2000s, maybe. Yeah, that's kind of what I was thinking, you know, right around there, because I'm pretty sure I was married at that point. Sorry to hear um, that. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, you live, you learn. <laughs> <laughs> Marriage is a great institution, as long as you don't mind living. Oh, uh, here we go. Thanks, George. So, but, uh, yeah, so, I mean, I mean kind of back to the whole, the, the whole 90s, kind of time like that was our era gen x you know that was right. kind of our era and you know it's funny because while we grew up in the 80s the 90s were actually probably more of the formable years right for us because i mean that's the time we spent from 18 to 26 27 um so you know i mean it's 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 interesting and just to because there are people now that will say well the music sucked in the 90s you know, I don't think all like, of it did. No, I, no, I'm just saying, but there are people that are a little right. younger than us that would say, man, the 90s sucked, you know, as far as music goes. And yet we think that there were some great things that came out mm -hmm. of the 90s. And I had mentioned earlier, I'm not, a, you know, I wasn't a huge Nirvana fan back then. Like, didn't like their music at all. Wasn't a big Pearl Jam fan. I wasn't a big, well, I, I, I think I've always enjoyed Oasis. Um, but like all those groups that came out of Seattle. Um, mm -hmm. But Soundgarden. Sound <clears throat> yeah, Soundgarden's, you know, really one of the um, one like I remember, was it Black Hole Sun? Is that mm -hmm. the one that? Yeah, I remember when it came out, I was like, man, this is a really great song. And then I kind of started listening to some of the other you know groups that were coming from there. So they may have been kind of my gateway into the 90s music as far as grunge went. Um, yeah, I never was a big, you know, flannel guy or anything like that. But you were now. <laughs> I totally was a cardigan guy, uh, and I like the cardigans. You know, um, <laughs> we're done. <laughs> I'm here all week, ladies and gentlemen. Uh huh. Um, but yeah, and, and again, you know, groups like Hootie the Blowfish. Um, you know, a lot of people say that they're overrated. I think they're really underrated 
Spin Doctors, I mean, they had a pocket full of kryptonite that came out. Um, but when you listen to their other music, uh, I mean, it was it was all good music, you know, that, that they came out with. And even Hootie and the Blowfish, they came out with, you know, Musical Chairs, which was another great album. Fairweather Johnson, you know, another great album. Fairweather um, Johnson. <laughs> But yeah, it was a uh, it was good stuff. I really enjoyed it. And all that music. I, yeah, I mean, I mean that, and, and I think your point shouldn't be lost as far as the, uh, you know, those were transformative. Those are the years that really made us who we are. You know, n- not to take anything away from you know the many decades we've lived in, but um, there's a lot to be said for that. Dude, we've been around for six decades. Shut up. <laughs> yeah, we're nowhere near 60 yet. No. Nope. So, although you look a little closer, you know, I don't have I don't have a beard right now, you know, so, but. Well, if I didn't have a beard, you'd see like <laughs> Jabba the Hutt sticking out of here. Dude, look, at go. look at this. You lay Jabba no bother. <laughs> see this? See, when I push it back, it kind of looks like a pear. Pear faced. Yes. Uh, but that's what I got for tonight. Yeah, I think the you know we could probably do you know a whole show focused on you know the different artists in that, which that may be something we do um, at some point. But uh, you know maybe that's uh, maybe that's our show for the evening and just what is going on over there. My dog has a cone on her head because she got fixed <laughs> while we were gone. And she's scratching the cone. It sounds like somebody's over here doing a little mixing and scratching. (laughs) That's awesome. The cone of shame. Oh yeah. It's it's this poor dog can't scratch her head. She's going nuts. Yeah. So just to let our viewers know again, um, next week we, we probably will not be on next week. We're going to uh, take a couple weeks. We're going to kind of, you know, retool the show. We're not going away. We're just going to make some changes that we think need to need to be done to bring you a better show. Um, and, you know, Mac and I have always said this, this is ultimate. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> you know, Mac and I have always said, this is ultimately your show. Um, we're here because we do enjoy doing it, uh, but we want to make sure that it's relative to, you know, what you guys are wanting to hear, what you guys are wanting to, to see, you know, guests that maybe we want to be on, but we're going to step back for a few minutes, kind of examine what we're doing, see what's working, see what's not working. And, um, you know, just hopefully bring you an overall better show. And I want to throw this to you guys out there. Also, we are actually looking for a show runner or a show producer, someone that can (laughs) write, someone that can actually help us uh, stay accountable to each other and stay accountable to themselves and just make sure that we've got the best show possible. And it's keeping us on task, not just for our benefit, but for your benefit, the viewer and the listener as well. So if you know someone or if you're interested in that, um, let us know. It's currently strictly a labor of love. Um, Hopefully that will transform at some point into a labor with pay. Um, but, uh, you know, uh, you know, so, yeah, let us know and, you know, keep uh, keep checking us out here at Facebook dot com forward slash Mac and Chuck. Um, and, you know, let us know what you guys are wanting. We're going to make sure to bring you updates. We're going to be going live here and there to let you know um, when we're coming back, what we're doing. Um, and rest assured, we will be coming back. <clears throat> this is not our last show. This is um, not good time. This is not goodbye. Maybe that's what we should have titled the show tonight. This is not um, goodbye. This is not goodbye. YouTubers do that crap all the time. You know, they'll, they'll put it in there. Like, yeah, the final episode. Is it? Is it not? <laughs> of yeah. course it's not. We love <laughs> money too much. You know, but, you know, anyway, let us know what you want to see. Let us know what you want to hear. Help us develop the best show for you. Um, you can message myself directly. You can message the show directly. You can message Mac directly um, and uh, you just, just check us out. Stay tuned. Let us know what you guys want to see and hear. You've been kind of a quiet audience tonight. I have seen people pop in and out, um, but yeah, let us know what you guys are looking for. Mac, you got anything on your end? Nope. All right. Well, you guys have a wonderful pen, week. Pen to paper. Pen to paper. That's right. 
pen to paper and rubber to the road. So, all right. That being said, you guys have a great week. We will see you soon. Bye. And bye. <laughs> bring those ideas our way. Love you guys. Yep. Thanks so much. Peace.